good evening everybody. Welcome baby Ruth. Um, uh, so this is, uh, we're now on um, uh, chapter 3 of Eat Your Way to Life and Health. So sabi kong ganun, nung, nung, ano, talaga, no, um, this is uh, an appointed time for all of us to really study this book. Feeling ko talagang ano siya, it's ano, God breathe and ano, it's really an appointed time for us to to know um, more deeper. Kasi meron na tayong revelation of the communion, eh, ba? And how it will benefit us. And how actually it essays or it chronicles the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pero bago yan lahat, gusto ko lang ulitin yung, ano, yung nakabless sa atin last week. ba sabi natin, ano, sabi ko, ay nanonood ako ng Netflix nung ano, nung parang uh, days ago. Tapos sabi ko, May narinig ako dun sa bida. Ang sabi nung bida, you know what? What you don't know, you will not trust. Which is very true. Because the, the Bible even says that what that the truth that you know will set you free. Hindi the truth will set you free. But it's the truth that you know. Kung ano yung alam mo. ba? So parang kanina nagbabay kami ni Eda kaninang umaga. So sabi ko yun, oh nga no, ba? So, Diba kung ikaw pinamana ng tatay mo or nakapag-asawa ka ng mayaman, ba? So kung hindi mo alam na may mga bank accounts pala yung asawa mo at mayaman siya, hindi ka mabe-benefit. ba? Buti na lang si Lord sinasabi niya sa atin na all I have is yours. Right? So so essentially ang ginagawa natin ngayon is um to really to really know his heart. Kasi nga um before people can have a steadfast faith for the healing of their body, they must get rid of all the uncertainties concerning God's will in this matter. Na, hindi na siya kesara-sara na, Lord, will mo ba akong gumaling? Of course, will kang gumaling ka, kasi it's part of the atonement. So, appropriating faith cannot go beyond one's knowledge of the revealed will of God. So, as as we as we know the truth that we need to know, yung, yung kasi hindi na lang siya knowledge, but it's revelation, di ba? So, faith is not going to be a struggle because our, the, di ba sabi nga natin dati, in faith is a good opinion of God. Right? You have a good opinion of Him no matter what you, you face or no matter what, no matter where you find yourself into. Right? That you have a good opinion of Him because you know and you know with all your heart and you have a, you had a revelation that He is really, really good. So, before we even attempt to exercise faith for healing, we need to know what scriptures, the, what the scriptures are plainly teaching us that it is the will of God to really that we walk in health and in wholeness and healing, right? Hindi, hindi nga yung ano eh, from, yung from sickness to healing, but it is the will of the Lord for us to be well, for us to be whole, to have, to, for us to have a long and healthy life. Kasi how can we, how can we enjoy life if we are flat on our backs? And how can we even dream to dream um, big dreams for God, like to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ if we are flat on our backs. But you cannot do that because when you are sick, you're very selfish. <laughs> Gusto mo gumaling ka. Anyway, so hindi na yun. So, ngayon, ngay- tonight, um, it's a, uh, and you, when we, ha- when we are having our discussion last Wednesday, talagang there was really a warming of the heart. It was an amazing experience for all of us. So, yung topic for, for tonight ay um, chapter 3. Non-sick, non-feeble. So, non-sick, non-feeble. So, kinuha ko yung ano, kinuha ko tong picture na to. Kasi this picture is a very nice picture compared to the usual Hollywood picture that we see. Um, ba yung mga may ika-ika, yung parang may mga matatanda. Pero itong picture na to, they all look very happy. You know what? In Psalms 105.37, and this is scripture, he also brought them out with silver and gold. Silver and gold. Meaning, hindi lang siya spiritual silver and gold. Ha? But it's literally, literally kayamanan. Kasi di ba yung, yung mga Egyptians, pinabaunan sila eh, ng silver and gold, di ba? Pinamanahan sila ng silver and gold. But uh, 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 spiritually, alam natin na yung silver is the, is the metal of redemption. Right, so the the metal of uh the metal of uh the, which signifies that we are forgiven of all our sins, and then because of the redemption, we are made righteous, and now we get gold. So talagang may order si Lord, no? He he really he really ano he really um 
do things in order. Silver and then gold. So after our redemption, then follows our bequ He bequeathed to us, di ba, the robe of righteousness. Then after us being declared righteous, ang sabi ng Biblia, and there was none feeble. Ang ibig pa lang sabihin ng non feeble so sabi niya ganun, you also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. And this is holy scripture. And this is your and my inheritance. You know what feeble means? Ah, before that, the Bible says there was none feeble among 600,000 men who left Egypt on the night of Exodus, in Exodus 12.37. But when you include the uh, women and children, scholars estimate about 2 to 3 million Israelites were free that night. Kasi in, in the Bible, what, we, what they record is only the men. Pero pag inano mo siya, pag uh, uh, sinama mo yung women and children, they're estimating it to be between 2 to 3 million. So out of this number, out of the 2 to 3 million Jews who came out of Egypt, none had a single feebleness. None came out who are feeble and who are sick. Anong ibig sabihin ng feeble? Kasyal in Hebrew, to stumble and to stagger. Yung in Tagalog yung iika-ika, 'di ba? Yung pipilay-pilay, to totter in the strong exhaustive concordance. Um it further is meant to be bereaved, cast down, decaying, failing, feeble. Kaya nga 'di ba importante na yung mga legs natin talaga ay ano, um ah uh, nito. Matibay. And it's it's the will of Abba. It's the will of our Father. It's the will of our Lord Jesus Christ for us to be strong in our legs. To be strong on our feet. So, no, yung, yung kasyal is weakness of the legs, falter, stumble. And mind you, what, what the Bible is saying is, they came out non-feeble. And this, for you and I, is our inheritance because of the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross. Because we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So, aralin natin ngayon yung Passover kasi prior to de them coming out of Egypt is nangyari yung Passover which is the shadow of the uh, of the cross because the Passover lamb is our Lord Jesus Christ. So, aralin natin yung shadow versus substance. So, ito yung ito yung, di ba, they were instructed to on the on the last night of the plague, di ba? For death to pass over them, they were told to strike Diba? To put the blood on the door po on the doorpost. And we know na we know we know that um this this Passover is a typology. It's a picture. Diba sabi natin when you're reading the the Bible, especially the Old Testament, it is a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because our Lord Jesus Christ is the favorite topic of Abba. So when naalala ko sabi ni Pastor Prince, how you treat Jesus is how you're going to be treated by Abba. So when when you extol him, diba? When you exalt the name of Jesus, diba? That's that's uh that's what what Abba wants, diba? How the way that you treat our Lord Jesus Christ, the the way that you talk about him, the way that you esteem him, it's the way that um Abba will also um um do to you. So anyway, so shadow versus substance. Jesus is the Passover lamb. Every year, Jews around the world, as in every year, because this is a commandment for them to reenact. How the Lord rescued them so powerfully during the night of the first Passover by take, partaking of a carefully prepared meal and observing certain traditions. Ang tawag nila dyan ay seder. Seder meal, which is the Passover meal. Okay, yung, ang ibig lang sabihin ng Passover is passage, um, crossing over to the other side. So the Passover was a, a picture of what our Lord Jesus was going to accomplish at the cross. When he delivered mankind from slavery to a greater Pharaoh who is Satan himself. Our Lord Jesus instituted the Holy Communion on the same night he celebrated the Passover. And this is recorded in Matthew 26, in Mark 14, and in Luke 22. The Apostle Paul, the, uh, the Gospel of Grace preacher, referred to him as Christ, our Passover Lamb, in 1 Corinthians 5.7. Because his sacrifice on the cross was the fulfillment. It is a substance to the shadow and the fullness of the Passover that happened during that night in uh, in Egypt. Kasi they were still in Egypt at that time. So, ang gagawin natin ngayon is to look at the shadow and not and, and, and the fulfillment which is the substance. You know that the lamb is for the house. The heart of our Abba is for a family. For the salvation of the family. In ex it's not only individual. Exodus 12, 2-4 This month is to be 
to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth, tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family. One for each household. Very precious, di ba? Because it's, the Lord is not only concerned about you. The Lord, His mind is all about family. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with the nearest neighbor. So now there's a hint of missions, di ba? Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. It's a family covenant. So your heavenly father wants your entire family saved. Now that they're not, they're not automatically saved, of course. But when you accepted, you and I, when, I, when we accepted our Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, you are in effect uh, brought the lamb into your house. He, has now, he now has a covenant with you and your family. The door is now wide open for him to move in or for him to place your family members in circumstances in such a way that they will hear the gospel Right? And their eyes will be opened and they will, they will believe in Jesus Christ themselves. So, in Exodus 12, 6, And you shall keep it up until the 14th day. Yung lamb. Ito yan eh. Yung lamb. Very cute. Until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. There was to be a lamb for a house. And if the house was too small for the lamb, they were to share it with their neighbor. So that's a picture of mission. So hindi nga lang yung ano, hindi nga lang yung pamilya mo, but also your neighbors. You see, it's never that the lamb is too small for the house. It's always that the house is too small for the lamb. That tells you that Jesus is bigger than all your needs. He is always too good and too powerful. He is always too loving and too sufficient. And this is what I, I want you guys to also get from this Bible study. That He always, always over answers your prayers and over provides for your needs. Ephesians 3.20, right? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ever ask or think. So, in Exodus 12.5, your lamb shall be without blemish. So, walang ano, walang, walang sugat, walang gasgas, walang sakit. A male of the first year. So, meaning one year old. You shall take it out from the sheep. So, kukunin mo siya dun sa sheepfold. Kukunin mo siya dun sa family or from the goats. As the type requires, Jesus, uh, a Christ, the lamb without spot or blemish, was separated from the others in the garden uh, when Judas betrayed him, di ba? In the in Garden of Gethsemane. And he was examined, di ba? If he had blemish in the courts by the uh, high priest and the Sanhedrin to see if he was worthy like a lamb. Is silent until he, he is commanded by an oath to declare whether he is the Christ, the Son of God. In Matthew 26, 63. But Jesus held his peace and the high priest answered and said to him, I adjure thee by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of, the Son of God. Diba? Inano pa niya? Tinare niya yung clothes niya and actually that was uh, a messianic prophecy. So, in Exodus 12, 7, And they shall take of the blood. Ito, alam nyo, ano to, um, revelation din to sa akin lately. I didn't know, oops, ako ba yun? In Exodus 12, 7, hindi lang pa siya yung ordinary parang mong pinipinturahan. Sabi nga nun, and they shall take of the blood and strike it. Strike. Hindi siya yung ganun. Strike on the side of the post and on the upper door of the post of the houses where they shall eat. So, pag ganun, Yung hisap. Ito yung hisap eh. Oops. Okay, so, the blood from the lamb must to be used to strike, not lightly or gently paint the side of the post and lintel. The striking was not only symbolic, but pointed to the sprink sprinkling on the altar that would soon become part of the law. It would not be struck on the threshold or door jam. The Jews were to pass through the blood and under the blood, under the blood, but no one is to trample the, the blood of the lamb under foot. Diba dun sa mercy seat, dun sa Ark of the Covenant, ini-strike ini din yung blood. And ano yung pinaka, ano yung mas, much greater revelation dito? Um, diba, ang sabi ni Lord sa Isaiah 53, And by your stripes, alam mo yung, yung, yung stripe dun is strike also. Hallelujah, diba? So mamaya i-lengthily i-ano i, i, natin, i-discuss natin. So further in Exodus 12 5 to 10. So binasa ko na yung first um first 7. Titingnan natin yung 8. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire. 
with unleavened bread, with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Do not, ang sabi, do not eat it raw. Anong, anong ibig sabihin nito? Nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire. Its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall not, you shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. So, ulitin natin na yung qualifications of the lamb. Without blemish, a yearling male, so baby pa siya, uh, one year old, a sheep or a goat, there was to be one lamb per household. They were to keep it in the house from the 10th day of the of the month to the 14th day. So, a total of 5 days. So, can you imagine, um, uh, kasama siya ng mga bata. So, napamahal na yung bata. Yung, ano, yung, yung lamb dun sa mga bata, diba? They were playing with the lamb. Anyway, it was to be killed at twilight, yung 3 p.m., which is the... Uh, uh, um, after nung sacrifice, right? Kasi diba may morning and evening sacrifice to to satisfy, to fulfill the uh, uh, prophecy about our Lord. Diba? He, yung Hebrew time. And then its blood was to be sprinkled on the doorpost and the lintel or strike, diba? On the doorpost and lintel on the outside of the house where they would eat the lamb. Then they had to eat the flesh on that same night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. You know, ngayon ko lang din nalaman last, yun yung Wednesday, Yung palang uh, pag-roast nila ay ganito. ba Sabi ganun, do not eat the meat raw or boiled, but roasted over fire with heads, with head, legs, and internal organs. Sa, uh, looks familiar, ba Para siyang yung ano, para siyang yung inihaw ng baliwag. Not raw or boiled, but roasted. How is where, anong ibig sabihin na to? Do not eat it raw. Why? Because it's a picture of literally our Lord Jesus Christ as a sacrificial lamb of God. When he went through to redeem us all, he was literally roasted, inihaw. Diba, pag bumibili ka ng, ano, pag bumibili ka ng um, lechon manok, pag nadikit ka dun sa ihawan, diba, ang init, ganun yung, in, I believe, much more pa yung inindor ni Lord dun. He was literally roasted. The fires of God's judgment, that is. That's why he cried, I thirst. So, eating the law, eating the, the lamb raw means it didn't go through it, kung, kung, pag hindi mo siya init ng, uh, pag init mo siya ng raw, it means you're not, you don't have a revelation that he was roasted. In other words, you you are not, um you, you, you don't know, right? You don't have a revelation that the fire of, of God's judgment was poured to his body for you and I so that we can walk in health and wholeness. They were also uh, they were also told not to boil the lamb. Boiling typifies watering down the word of God. So it's like, when we partake of the Holy Communion, we should not be focusing on our Lord Jesus, or Jesus life in raw form before he, he, he had been burned by the fire of God's judgment on the cross. So, for example, we should not be seeing Him as the baby in the manger or, or as He is recorded in the, in the Gospels before the cross. When we are partaking the Holy Communion, eh, the time that we are, when we are partaking the Holy Communion, when we are receiving Communion, we see Him as roasted. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? Anong in, in practical terms or in when when we translate it? See your sicknesses on his body. Where it was roasted on fire. Diba? Our sick, yung sicknesses mind, you cannot be present at two places at the same time. It will be double jeopardy. So, the way that it will be beneficial for us is to see, for example, COVID on his body. Lord, I see it on your body, not on my body. Right? So, yun yung seeing him as uh, roasted because he literally was roasted for COVID. So, ito yan. You know that there was a particular way of roasting the Passover lamb. Roasting a lamb on a spit requires one rod across the length of the body and a cross member to hold open, in open, flayed shoulders to expose the heat. Instructions were given for how to roast the lamb, the head with the legs and with the pertinence, yung mga intestines. Mga internal organs. The manner in which the lamb is to be roasted will require two skewers, diba? horizontal and chaka, vertical, rods to hold the lamb. The first with the lower leg secured, running lengthways from the back of the neck down. It's a picture of the cross, right? Another is threaded to hold the shoulder blades upon exposing the internal organs. So literally, pag bibili ka ngayon ng lechon manok, right? You will have an appreciation of the communion. The spit forms the shape of a simple cross and is suspended directly over the fire. Diba ganyan yan? <laughs> Much more kasi inopen yung, ano eh, inopen yung entrails eh. Hallelujah! And that's where our sicknesses 
we're at. And doon, lahat ng sicknesses, that's why he was literally roasted with fire. And that's why we can say, it is no more mine. Wala na yan, hindi na. It's not mine. You paid already for this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Jesus, our Lord Jesus, bore the fire of God's judgment. So, let's eat the lamb roasted in fire. That's a picture of the fire of God's judgment on Christ. See his body burnt and smitten with our diseases on the cross and see God unleashing his holy vengeance and righteous anger against our sins in the body of his son. It cannot be at two places at the same time. Cannot be. It's either akuin mo siya, right? Or you see it on the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? So the way that it will be gone is when you see it on the cross. Sin has to be punished and Jesus took it all on himself. So you and I need to bear the punishment. So on the cross, Jesus did not just take our sins. So when we receive communion, Lord, as we partake of your body, I see, I see, if you're sick, right? I see, I see the sickness on your body. Diba? Picture it on the cross. Hallelujah. He became sin so we might become the righteousness of God in him. He also took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses on his own body. In Isaiah 53, 4. Every tumor, every cancerous growth, every deformity, every rheumatoid arthritis, even COVID, every kind of sickness, he took it upon himself at the cross. That's why he cried, di ba? I thirst, di ba? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, ito yung inaral natin last week and I would like to repeat it. So, Jesus, di ba yung woman with the issue of blood? The woman had a menstrual discharge for 12 years. So, so Jesus, ulitin natin na, so Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. So we know by now that yung robe niya had a zitzit, takelet, right? Which, which represents his righteousness. She wasn't, she wasn't um, conscious of the law. Kasi, di dapat siya nasa labas kung law, di ba? Kasi she will be stoned. Ang may reglang uh, babae ay hindi dapat nasa labas. She will be stoned kasi she's considered unclean. But what she was conscious of, she was conscious of Jesus. She she wanted to touch His righteousness. So, ngayon tayo, ang revelation is, Lord, thank you that you have been, we have been made the righteous of God in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that for, for the robe of righteousness. So, so nakita natin doon sa Numbers 15.39, right? When you see the tassels, the tassels represents righteousness, uh, Jesus' righteousness. You will remember and obey all the commands. And when we just read the, when we just read the English, right? You will just, you will see it, ah, it's obe obeying the commands. But actually, it's the Lord Jesus. And remember who? Aleph tab, Aleph tab, Aleph and tab is the signature of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And, and, and dun sa Mark 5, 31 to 34, diba? Sabi natin, but his disciples said to him, you, you see the multitude thronging you who touch me? And then he said in, in, in verse 34, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Affliction in Greek is mastix. It's to scourge. It's to strike. Right? It's to strike. Diba? Parang yung salinto. It's to strike. It's to, it's to scourge. So, so, affliction is not from, definitely from the Lord. Affliction is what He paid for for you and I. Right? And in Hebrew, ang Hebrew word is kabura. By His stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. So, ito dinagdag ko, wala to dun sa Wednesday study. You know, in Isaiah in Isaiah 53, right, it, it, it um, prophesies yung Day of Atonement, yung Yom Kippur. It clearly describes the price of our bridegroom, king, uh, bridegroom king's payment for our freedom. Yung sorrows doon, di ba? Yung sorrows doon, Isaiah 53 verse 5, He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And, uh, and we hid as, as it were our faces from him and he was despised and we did not esteem him. You know yung sorrows? So sometimes, uh, meron tayong mga episodes na, Alam kaya ni Lord na nasasaktan ako? Alam kaya ni Lord na malungkot ako? You know that he, he you know what what you feel, what you feel as sorrow. He he felt 100 million times more than that. Yung sorrow in Strong's 4341, Makob. 
It means anguish, affliction, grief, pain. So let's look at the primitive root yung sa 3510 kaab. These words, this yung, yung root word ng sorrow ng makom is means to feel pain. So he 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 knows how you feel. He knows what what pain is, grieving, mar, have pain, make sad or sorrowful. So makom, it looks like this. When we look at the letters, we find yung three letters kaf. Yung kaf, ang meaning niyan is an is an is hand, diba? Uh, anointing of the hand on the head. It means redemption. It means to bend down, God bending down, surrendering the palm of the hand. It's all, it's all, it, it's also a picture of a wing, good works with the hand of our Yeshua. So yun yung kaf. Yung second letter is aleph, uh, meaning um God, diba? Meaning um an ox, strength or a leader, most important first, the strength and the power of a leader. Yung third is Beth, which means a house. Diba? Uh, divide or division means also house, family, God's word, God's dwelling place. So, what does it mean by sorrow? Ano yung, ano yung ibig sabihin ng word na sorrow? Here we see that our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, experienced pain and sorrow as He reached out His hand to do God's work with God's strength and power. In unity with God, in unity with Abba, He established a place for God to dwell, a house, a family, tayo, us. Kana, no? Hallelujah. And ano pa, Isaiah says that he would be acquainted with grief. So, he knows when we when we are feeling down. He knows when we are sad. Acquainted means that he would know, understand, and experience something. While we, wo while we won't look at this world in depth because of its many meaning, word in depth because of its many meaning, it's in, it's interesting to know that there's a dalet yung yung uh, yung door, which is which means door yung gate impoverished man to come from indicating a path a, 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 a pathway a place of decision or entrance to life and death. So ang meaning nung ang meaning nung acquainted with grief, Yeshua know knew his sacrifice would give mankind a door to enter into everlasting life. He was willing to go to the cross for each of us to have the opportunity. To make the decision to enter that doorway through belief in Him, He is the door, right? He is the doorway to the to the ship gate. So, yung ano naman yung grief? Yeah, yung primi, uh, prim, primitive roof niya is twenty four seventy. The word grief is most often translated as the word sickness and disease in our Bible. In Deuteronomy seven fifteen, the Lord will take away from you all sicknesses and will afflict with not will uh, and will afflict you with none. Of the terrible diseases of uh, of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on, will lay them on all those who hate you, and the root word also translated most often as sick in Genesis forty eight one. Now, now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed your father is sick. So clearly, yung um yung 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 grief is also translated as sickness. Are you grieving, right? Are you are you sick? So tignan natin yung words ah, yung chat. Yung, ito yung first, yung may, may letters din siya, yung uh, three letters. New beginnings means fence, di ba? Naaral natin to gate, tent, wall to separate. And then lamed means blood of Messiah, which means also the shepherd. Dedication means a staff. A goad or a stick means also authority. Yung, yung uh, hey, hey is, means grace, right? It's, it means revelation. So, anong ibig sabihin? Anong ibig sabihin yan? He was acquainted with grief. He knew the need for a new beginning, a place of separation and protection from the enemy. He also knew it would take his own blood to do it. Lamed, yung, yung, uh, which is our good shepherd. So he chose to dedicate himself to the task and move forward, instructing others with revelation about God's grace. Ganda, no? And that's all in Isaiah 53. So by his stripes, you are healed. One of the most evil things that you that um that you have heard from before and um and is, and is still around actually sometimes is that God teaches you or chastises you chastises you as his child can you imagine with sicknesses diseases accidents and tragedies e kung tayo nga earthly parents we don't we don't lay our hands or we don't maltreat our children much more our heavenly Abba right this is a lie from the pit of hell. Do you know that this this is a, a very erroneous teaching, which is actually based on an old on the old covenant. So in Leviticus twenty six twenty eight, God says to those who fail to obey His commandments, "I will chastise you, chastise you seven times for your sins." But guess what? 
Because of Jesus' finished work at the cross, we are no longer under the covenant of the law. You are now under His grace, under the covenant of His grace, under the new, under the new um, covenant of His blood. Jesus has already borne all your chastisement and punishment on the cross. So read it for yourself in Isaiah 53 again and again until, right? It, 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 it chew it, bunch it, right? And napakarami pang revelation dyan. So the prophet Isaiah saw a prophetic vision of our Lord Jesus on the cross bearing the punishment of our transgressions. He declared that the chastisement that we deserve came upon Jesus so that you and I will never have to go through what he endured on our behalf. By his stripes, you are healed. So how can anyone have the audacity to say that God will still teach you with sicknesses, diseases, and accidents today? To say this is to dishonor and to negate the finished work of Jesus Christ. Under the new covenant, God will never again chastise the believer for his sins. And how does he teach us? Through his word. That's why we're studying, right? So whatever conditions you have today, it is not from the Lord. Let's look to the cross. See our diseases on the cross. See our lack on the cross. See him beaten and scourged for you. And receive healing and wholeness from Him. He has paid the price for your total healing by His stripes. You are healed. A man is not established by wickedness, right? But the root of the righteous cannot be moved. So, uh, discuss natin to last week, di ba? The root is for you to know that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not, be, ang ibig sabihin ng righteousness is God giving you His righteousness, not your own righteousness, not your doing. Righteousness is a noun. You are parang uh, bininyagan or imputed with righteousness, right? And when you know that you are righteous, you you will read, uh, you will uh, uh, produce the fruit, and one of them is healing. So when we partake or when we receive um, holy communion, right? We we must we must partake it with um, um, expectation, just like um, um, in Exodus twelve eleven, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. What, is, what do this mean? Why did they have to eat with belts on their waist and sandals on their feet and staff in their hands? God was telling them to be ready for their physical deliverance, even as they ate the roasted lamb. In the same way, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we partake it with full in full faith and expectancy. Let's partake expecting our miracle to take place, expecting our deliverance. Remember yung bread, di ba? It's not only um, healing, but also provision because bread means divine, ayong artos means divine provision. Your possession and my possession is divine provision. That's what the Israels did. That's what the Israelites did. And they came out with none, uh, not one sick, not one feeble, with silver and gold. Amen. Hallelujah. As you partake of the Lord's Supper by faith, expect to see the full manifestation of your healing and your provision. Because of what happened on that day on the cross, you can trust God for freedom from diseases and provision that has shackled you or lack that has shackled you. You can freely receive the blessings of abundant life, health, and strength. You can rest in the knowledge that you've been marked and covered by the blood of His protection and no plague can come near your dwelling, mean, can come near your house, your entire family. You can have the confidence that the same God who freed a whole nation from the from oppression fights for you. And if God is for you, no sickness, no virus, no economic downturn, no medical condition can prevail against you in Romans 8.31. So, there's another um, revelation about the uh, communion, and this is very precious. You know, every time I I watch the video, yung bridal video ni Eda, tsaka ni, ano, ni, ni Anda, Gusto ko rin magkaroon nun. Actually, gagawa ko ng sarili kong version. You know, um, you marriage customs of the first century Jewish people in the land of Israel during the time of Jesus, a young man, yung binata, would choose a young woman that he wanted to marry. He and his father would go to the home, mamamanikan, of the young woman and meet with her and her father. They will discuss yung dowry. The men would discuss the bride, the bride price. So yan very ano very common sa uh, mga Chinese tsaka Indian. The bride's price was an amount of money or goods exchanged between the groom and the bride's father. It was a payment of sorts for the hand of his daughter. So can you imagine Abba 
looking for for the bride of our Lord Jesus Christ. Parang ganyan, di ba? So, when they arrive at the price that would be paid for his young girl, uh, at that at that time, during the time of Jesus, they marry at a young age, 14, 15, 16. The young man would then ask her to marry him, but he did it in a very Jewish way. Yan. You know what? Ano yung sasabihin niya? After na, after na, mapag, mapag-usapan yung, mapag-agrihan yung dowry, which is the bride price, ito yung sasabihin ng Jewish, yung Jewish uh, binatilyo, yung Jewish binata. The young's father, before that, would take a flask of wine. He would pour a cup of wine and hand it to his son. The son would then turn to the young woman and with all the solemnity of an oath before Almighty God himself, the young man would take that cup of wine and say to the young woman, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is uh, which I offer to you. This is their custom. So, alam ng lahat ng tao yan, lahat, alam ng lahat ng mga, uh, uh, lalong-lalo ng mga kinasal na, at ng mga binata at mga dalaga. In other words, the, the guy is saying, I love you. I'll be your faithful husband. Will you be my bride? So now, at this point, the young woman could say no or refuse the cup, right? She can say no or she could say yes and take the cup and take and drink. Then she, she in turn would take the cup and hold it out to her groom and she will say, all that I have and all that I am, I give to you. I will be your bride. Yan yung custom nila noon. I will marry you. All this formality was the practice instituting yung engagement nila. Okay. So, now, let's look at the Passover dinner. Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua is the Hebrew Hebrew, um, Hebrew counterpart of Jesus, was, ha- was having it with his disciples. Unleavened bread is striped, pierced, and served at every seder meal. Dun sa seder meal, may apat na cups. May apat na cups ng wine. And when he took the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. Ito na, ito yung ano, body niya, di ba? Which was pierced for us, which was striped for us for our healing and wholeness. And then, he takes the, then there are four cups usually poured and celebrated in a traditional seder. Yung first cup is sanctification. Yung, yung second cup is the cup of wrath poured out. So, do, uh, poured out. So, do not drink for Messiah, drink it for us. And then, yung third is um, the cup of redemption. Right? And then, yung fourth is uh, to be drunk of, at the second coming of um, the Messiah. So, dun sa third cup, the third cup is the cup of redemption. When Yeshua, when our Lord Jesus Christ, during the Last Supper, He took it. He didn't say the usual prayer. Ito yung usual prayer. Ito yung um, in-instruct ni Moses dun sa mga Israelites actually to say Ito yun, Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of Universe, Creator of the fruit and the vine, and He said. But instead of saying just this, right? Our Lord Jesus said, Our Lord Jesus said, And, and, and before that, the disciples knew the Passover liturgy since they were old enough to think. So suddenly, in the middle of the liturgy, diba, Alam nila yung blessed be the, uh, uh, the Lord Mosai. So suddenly, in the middle of that, after the third cup, completely out of place, Jesus, on his way to pay the uh, the uh, uh, to pay the bride price with his own blood, turns to his disciples and said to them, in the language of their culture, and he said, "This is this cup is the new covenant in my blood." So what was he saying? What was he saying? I love you. Will you be my bride? So the communion. It's actually a, a remembrance. That's why he's saying, do it in remembrance of me. That's why he's saying, he, he, he's saying, remember. Remember that I'm saying, I love you. You are my bride. Hallelujah. So, sabi niya, drink it, drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The disciples were shocked. Yeshua, in essence, was saying, all that I am, all that I am. All that I am. Sabi niya, diba? He's the great I am. Blank check. And all that I have, I give to you. I love you. So when you have Jesus, literally, you have everything. He is your husband. Sabi niya, 
Ang sinasabi niya noon na, kasi now we, now we, we, are, we are no more engaged, we are the bride of Christ. He was in effect saying, will you marry me? Will you be my bride? So every time, every time we do the communion, we remember his love for us, right? You are my bride. I am your husband. He he was actually proposing a marriage to them. So now he didn't propose, right? He's we we remember him as our husband. We remember our wedding night. The words usually associated with a marriage proposal were inserted into the feast, into the Passover feast they had celebrated all their lives. So bago yon yung this is the this is the this is the cup of the new covenant bago yon, and he was literally imb- inviting the disciples to be his bride. So Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ, was renewing a co- was renewing a covenant with them. It marked a reconciliation with Israel and a redemption for all mankind. It was a it was a actually a covenant of marriage. So when you are partaking of the communion. When you're receiving the communion, remind yourself, I am, I am, I am your bride, Lord. Thank you for your blood. All that you have, I, I, it's mine, right? All that the Father has is mine. Hallelujah. So that's why you can say in Isaiah 54:5, for your husband, for my husband is my Maker, whose name is the Lord of Hosts, and my Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, who is called the God of all the earth. And in Jeremiah 31:32, it's now it's it has now come true. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Now it's a fulfillment. It is finished with the house of Israel and in, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers <coughs> in the day <coughs> that I took them out of the by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. Now it's a new covenant, no more the covenant of the law. And in Colossians 2:9 to 10 in the TLB version, for in Christ there is all of God in a human body because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. So you have everything when you have Christ and you are filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. Now you can say you are more than conqueror. Because of what your, uh, what your husband has given you, what your husband has finished on the cross. So when we celebrate, when we receive communion, when we partake of the bread, and especially when we drink of the cup, we too are renewing, remi- reminding, diba? remembering. The sa sabi niya, do this as often as you can, diba? Do it in remembrance of me. He's saying, remember me, your husband. He's offering himself again to us and asking for our response. Diba in Romans 5:17, you want to reign in life. Those who reign in in life will receive the abundance of grace, diba? And the gift of righteousness. How do we do that in practical terms? How we, how do we how do we take hold of it, diba? When we receive the abundance of grace, right? When we when we acknowledge, when we re, when we when we remember, when we once again, Lord, thank you for your grace, thank you for your forgiveness, and the gift of righteousness, right? So. When taking his cup, we are again saying, Lord, I receive your gift again today. And I give you all that I am and all that I have. I am your bride. When we say, I receive your gift, we are saying, Lord, I receive your forgiveness, your healing, your deliverance. I receive my identity with you as holy, accepted, righteous, and loved. I receive your life within me. And that empowers me to represent you in our world by the power of the Holy Spirit. And my dear sisters, my life is your. And may we say it always when we receive the communion life. My life is yours, Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. And that, my dear sisters, is chapter 3. Non-feeble, non-sick.